They're piling in now. Man, for the W, uh, it's a Yeti. What's up, guys? Um, I am sitting here with a young man that was born in Japan, um, did not speak a lick of English until he moved to the States, had one junior college offer out of high school, a Division I full life scholarship to UTSA. He's got a BS in kinesiology, an MS in business, and now a global first-round draft pick for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, man. Les, how are you today? I'm doing great, sir. Thanks for having me on here. Man, I'm super excited when we get a chance to have um like I said, you're we're you're a homer, man. You're you're one of those um young men that we were like really excited to grab a hold of when the draft happened. Um, you know, I made fun of it because there's a lot of punters that go, but that's obvious. It's a global yeah, draft yeah. pick. Everybody else plays soccer in the world besides us in the states that yeah. that play football. So I made fun of it. Wow. But it was really different to see a linebacker go that. How did did you like talk about the call? Like when you got that, were you expecting the call? Did you think the call was going to happen? Where yeah. were you at with it, man? So the thing with the global combine, you know, it was supposed to happen in 2020, but with Corona, it got canceled and I had to wait all the way until, you know, March of uh, 2021. So, uh, you know, it's been a long process. I've been waiting for like two years and I've talked to almost every single team, but with Winnipeg, you know, I've had multiple Zoom sessions and I've talked to their head coach, their GM, all their uh, coaches, assistant coaches, and I just felt really close with them. I just felt like they believed in me. I felt like, uh, you know, I just felt that like a family oriented connection with them. So I was actually telling my friends like, I really think I'm going to go fourth, uh, fourth pick, like first round, fourth pick to the Winnipeg. And then next thing you know, it happened. Whenever I saw that on the screen, on the CFL's tracker, we had it on the TV. I just started yelling and I just started like going crazy. And then whenever I uh, calmed down, uh, I got a call from the head coach, uh, Mike O'Shea. And then he, uh, I didn't even know it was him at the time because I was so excited. I was kind of like, you know, like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then I didn't even, even know that was the head coach. But after I got off the phone, I just started screaming, let's go. Uh, I think CFL posted me uh, on their Instagram, if you want to see that. Um, yeah, so I was very excited. And then, you know, a couple hours later, I, I found out that, you know, it was the head coach. And uh, he actually played linebacker. Uh, he was a CFL uh, Hall of Fame linebacker. And whenever I looked at his stats and everything, you know, he's, he's a great player. And then the crazy thing is he was picked first round, fourth pick in the CFO draft. So, like, it's kind of – we have a lot of similarities, being a linebacker and being picked, uh, you know, first round, fourth pick. So it was a real surreal moment, and uh, I'll really cherish that moment for the rest of my life. Cool. The, and, and you bring up – coaches are, are one of those things as athletes – um, I was an athlete a long, long time ago. I'm an old man now, so so my career is, is long and gone. So I get to live vicariously through um, men of character like yourself. So it, it's really cool um, when when we get to hear those stories, and we appreciate that. Like you're you're chasing your your dream. Like you're chasing your football dream. This is something that you do. You feel like you're able? Are you manifesting this, man? I mean, I know you posted on yeah. Twitter like, "Hey, I, I I said this a year ago, and here I am." Like, are you yeah. are you so making this happen? <clears throat> Yeah, it's crazy because, uh, like you said, exactly two years ago from today, April 27th, uh, 2019, uh, I said it was right after the NFL draft. I didn't get a call. I didn't get any, you know, shot or anything like that. And I said, um, what I say? Uh, I said, uh, um, I said, uh, what? I don't even remember. I just remember yeah. reading it today. I don't remember yeah, what it was. I but it, what it, I said, but I was like, uh. You know, I find, no, I said, don't worry, I find another way. That's what I said. Don't worry, I find another way. And then uh, next thing you know, you know, two years later, the almost, you know, actually yesterday, but almost two years later, exactly two years, you know, I signed with the Winnipeg, you know, so it's been a long process. And, you know, I just trusted in God's plan. 
I always had faith and I just kept believing like, you know, I always felt like I belong in the CFL, NFL. I always thought that, you know, I had the talent and athleticism and a work ethic to get there. So, you know, it was a surreal moment, but uh, I still got a lot of work to do when I get to the CFL. Uh, I want to prove myself, uh, prove myself and prove other people wrong that I belong on the field. So when you, I asked this question when, when an individual or an athlete says, I'm here to prove somebody wrong. I don't know if you can name names. I don't know if you can name people. I don't know if you're speaking in general, but a lot of times is that directed towards, and these are what we talk about, man. We're not the regular guys when we interview, like I'm not going to, I'm going to be respectful to the uh-huh. CFL. I'm going to be respectful to XFL. I'm going to be respectful to everything, yeah. but I want to know like what makes you're talking about um, resilience. And you're talking about, I'm going to rise to the top and I'm going to show you like, this is, I'm going to be defiant and I'm going to show you, are there, are there people in your life? Like right now you're, you're going to say, look at me, watch me go. Yeah. It's just that like, you know, I was, uh, you know, being an Asian football player, you know, growing up, just, I, I started playing football in middle school, but like being an Asian football player, you just kind of get that look like, you know, I've never seen a Japanese football player before. Like, can he, can he actually play? Isn't he supposed to be good at school? Like, aren't Asians, like, are Asians athletic? Like, you get those kind of questions. You get those doubts right off the bat you, from the coaches, from the players. So I always had to prove myself. I always had to prove myself that, you know, I can play. I belong on the field, you know. But it takes time because, you know, it just – it's uh, human nature. People doubt you and stuff like that. So, you know, right now – um, you know, I made it. I made it to the CFL, but I still have to make the roster. I still have to. Uh, you know, I want to play in this, on the special team. I want to get on, get in the rotation linebacker. I want to eventually start as a linebacker. I have those goals in my mind. And then, uh, you know, when you get to the higher level, uh, a lot of people start. Um, you know like kind of hating on you a little bit yeah. sometimes, you know? They're There's grabbing your some, coattails, man. They're yeah. grabbing your coattails because they want to yeah. hold you down. They want to keep you down, and yeah. they want to be better. And and that's yeah. one of those things I think I, I've seen in you is that you're willing to separate yourself no matter what that means t- to get to that place where you want to be. And you, I feel like you're you're in that place. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the, the biggest thing when I did the intro and I left it out is, and you lost your father at a, at a really, like a young age. Mm-hmm. Is that, and that's kind of the, the purpose of the question was, is this one of those things like, dad, I'm, I'm here, like, watch me go. Yeah. So yeah, I lost my father uh, when I was three years old and it was hard growing up without a father because I didn't have that leadership, that man guidance of telling me what to do. I just kind of, you know, did my own thing, like play sports just because I wanted to play sports. And then uh, I just realized that with sports, I can get a full ride scholarship, especially with football, because football, you know, you got a lot of money. So I knew that I could help my single mom out that's raising two kids on her own. So, um, you know, if I get a full ride scholarship, she don't have to worry about paying for college, you know. So I, I want to I wanted to, you know, kind of get out and do something different with my life. So with football, you know, I, I got those uh, many, many opportunities that um led me to, you know, getting my master's degree, you know, uh, going back to Japan and playing as a professional for two years. Now I'm going to the CFL and representing my country. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just, um, it's a crazy, crazy story. Like you can't write it any better than that. It just sounds like a movie really, but, uh, I'm just truly blessed. And, uh, yeah, I'm just very, very blessed. How um how difficult was it? I mean, you, you moved to the states at a that's a that's a pivotal time at a kid's age. You're you're you know getting ready to go in the double digits, 10, 11, 12. Mm-hmm. You don't know a a lick of English. Yeah. Plus, you're moving into Midwest America. Mm-hmm. How, how tough was that for you as a kid to adjust and come here? Plus, you're battling the stereotypes of you can't play yeah. sports. You're supposed to be this. I'm not saying this. I'm just, you know, stereotypes in general when it comes out is, you know, you're supposed to be smart at math. You know, you're just I get good grades. I don't I'm not athletically talented unless I'm playing ping pong like the stupid shit. Excuse my friends. The stupid things that people would say when it comes to that. So like battling those stereotypes and where you're at right now on the drive and losing your father. Has there ever been a time where you haven't won? I mean, it's just that those adversity made me who I am today. If I didn't have those battles, if I didn't have those kind of stereotype, 
that kind of made me mad and put a fire like in my like heart or my body like I wouldn't be the player I am I wouldn't be the person I am today so without those things like losing a father at a young age I don't know if I would have got my master's degree I don't know if I would have been the starting linebacker as a Japanese player at a one level I don't know if I would have you know got drafted first round to the Winnipeg so it's like those things made me who I am and made me stronger. So, um, you know, growing up, uh, you know, sometimes like learning English was, you know, it, it could be difficult. And sometimes I say the wrong things like growing up and then, uh, you know, people will laugh at it. Like, like you said that word wrong or something like that. And then I didn't, really didn't like that because I like to, you know, I like to always be right. So uh, I'll go home and really practice. I would say the word over and over and over until I can get it right. I would just listen to it on like YouTube or something and I'll just keep listening to it until I can get the pronunciation right. So, you know, um, it just came with hard work and then um, those little adversities and big adversities really uh, made me into a warrior that I am today. What's your what's your approach on a daily basis? I mean, do you have and the reason I ask this is because you're bringing up the important things in life, a, a male role model a father, somebody in your life to, to show you the ways, uh, you know, that to be a man, to be a man of God, to be a man in the world, yeah. um, just to be that person. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like uh, you've, you continue to do that on a, on a daily basis? Like what is your, what's your wake up and routine? You're, you're obviously a driven young man. You, you want to succeed. Mm -hmm. You're a perfectionist at heart. You've mm -hmm. got drive. So, so what time are you, are you like a Marky Mark? Are you waking up at four thirty and you're you're doing your workout and you're hanging out for fifteen hours or like what's your typical day as far as getting ready? You're doing what you're doing, getting ready for the CFL. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not really the type of person to wake up like at four a.m. or anything like that. You know, I you know I you know graduated with a kinesiology athletic medicine major, so I kind of learned a lot of things about the body recovery and stuff like that so you kind of need sleep as athletes for how hard you train you need a lot of sleep like they say that olympic athletes need about 10 hours of sleep so you know like i don't know like if you wake up at four you gotta be going to sleep at like eight so me i can't really do that with my schedule so i wake up around seven eight and then i usually uh go lift weights for like hour and a half then i come back uh, you know, I usually eat like chicken, rice, vegetables and stuff like that. I eat pretty healthy. And then after I eat, uh, and after my food digest, I go to the field and then do field work for, you know, hour and a half, two hours. And then I come home and I, you know, usually stretch, just chill out. And I usually just, uh, try to watch some type of football, like YouTube, CFL game or my old film or anything like that, just to keep my mind in football because football isn't all physical. It's a lot of mind game too. So, you know, uh, I do that and I just do that really every day. And then uh, I try to work out almost every day. Do you enjoy being or having that control in the field? Do you enjoy being able to look at a quarterback and figuring out, I know where this is going. I know what's happening. Yeah. I know what's going to happen, and we're going to smash it. Do you do you yeah. enjoy that chess piece in football? Yeah, that's like the best part about football is that when you see a formation or a personnel and then you just see the old lineman's hands, like sometimes it's light. Sometimes they're uh, heavy on their hands. So you kind of notice those little things, and you're like, okay, this guard is about to pull. I could, I could just see it by his body, and I – I seen that on film. He's about to pull. They're about to run a power. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna, you know, trust my gut and just go. And then if you get right, boom, you're gonna make those tackle for loss, and people are gonna look at you like, whoa, like, how'd you get there so fast? But you know, it comes with film study. It comes with time. Like Luke Keekley, he's a, he was a linebacker for the Panthers, and uh, you know, he was the best at it. He watched film more than anybody. He wasn't the most athletic he wasn't the most fastest linebacker but he was probably the smartest linebacker and he would make those plays and he would get those interceptions before you know you know before let like uh the offense can even like adjust to a different formation so uh yeah so i look up to like players like him and then uh, i try to mimic what they do and it's probably the best feeling when you get it right like when you make that tackle for loss and you're like i knew it 
it's almost like you're acing a test. Like you walk into a test and you know that you're just going to ace it. You walk in and you're like, you know, everybody's all stressed out, but you just walk in like, like I'm ready to take this. I'm going to ace it. I know it. So it's kind of like that confident boost. And then it gives you that extra, uh, you know, push to uh, play better. So your, your approach is true professional. I mean, that's kind of, that's your, your oh. job. Your yeah. job is to be professional. Your job is to um, study, know, understand, find a person's tell. Is it, do they call an audible in this formation? Is it the same audible every time? Yeah. Like that tape study and the degrees, I think for me, a lot of times when um, we take the chance to get to know somebody like yourself is, mm-hmm. is really key for us because that tells a lot of not just what you're studying, right? But the degrees that you have with it mm-hmm. and the life story. Like I, the Japanese football, mm-hmm. how much I was over there in Okinawa. Like we, we had talked about before yeah. through messages. I was over there for about seven months and spent some time on the mainland. And I loved the baseball over there. Like I absolutely yeah. loved the baseball over there. Plus they're mad about golf. The golf driving ranges are in, like, there's interstates that go around like yeah. driving places for and golf. The, and the thing about the driving, sorry to cut you off, but no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The golf place is that you know at Top Golf. Have you been to Top Golf before? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the balls will automatically come out, but you have to pick the ball up and put it on the what's it called? The, the tee. Tee. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to always bend over, get the ball, and put it on the tee. But most of the uh, places in Japan, they will automatically just put it like they have a machine that gets the ball and put it on the tee every single time. So after you hit it, boom! You don't have to bend over. You just wait for the ball. To just get on the tee, boom, you hit it. So it's like their technology over there is just, you know, kind of futuristic, just ahead of time. It's hard to, it was hard when I came back to explain the difference in how automated they're willing to be as opposed to us in the States that are like, absolutely not. I want nothing to do with that. And it does, it, the enhancements over there are really fun. That uh, yeah. was what I enjoyed the most. Mm-hmm. Did you experience uh, American football over there while you were a kid, or was your experience only when you moved back over here? Yeah, so I didn't even know anything about Japanese football, but whenever I researched it, like whenever I was like about to go to Japan, I noticed that they've had football like before I was even born, but I didn't even know they had American football because where I grew up, is I, I grew up in Shizuoka, Japan, and they don't have football like soccer is really their main sport it's like soccer than baseball so you know it's only really popular in tokyo and osaka like um those are like the two biggest cities in uh, japan so those are like really the only two cities that really uh play american football over there but if you go to those cities like when you talk about american football a lot of people will actually know and actually understand the rule and everything so football is you know getting bigger and bigger and, uh, yeah, I actually didn't know anything about it. I didn't even know if they had college uh, football over there either. So, um, yeah, I had no idea. So the thing was, like, I, I did my pro day in 2019 at UTSA. And then after the draft, you know, I was kind of devastated. And I kind of just gave up on football for about two months. I started working. And, uh, you know, I just didn't want to do anything with football. I was so devastated that I didn't even want to watch it. Every time I see it on TV, I'll change it or turn it off. Right, right. And I did, like if I see it on like, Instagram or something, I just like scroll it or just unfollow it because I didn't want to deal with anything about football. And I started working for about two to three months and uh, I missed it. Like I missed the excitement. I missed hitting people. I missed all that, everything to do with football, like that family, family uh, t- uh, team sport. And, um, uh, yeah, after that, you know, I started doing my research, and that's when I found out about the X League. You get paid to be you get paid to be violent. That's really yeah. what it is. You get paid to go out there and try to hurt people. <clears throat> and I appreciate that more than anything because I, I that's the part. As you grow old and you get old like me, I'm an old man. Mm-hmm. Um, that part of life and that zest to be able to run full speed and hit your buddy as hard as you possibly can and maybe yeah. see snot, blood, teeth, saliva fly and get up and laugh mm-hmm. is absolutely one of those things that um, football does. And it also yeah. creates some amazing rivalries between people. And I, the storied history of the CFL, 
I'm a Montana kid, so JP's not here. He's Boston. They don't have CFL is kind of foreign to a lot of people in the states. I'm fortunate because up here in the north, like I'm used to the three downs, mm-hmm. the center line, like the extra space in yeah. the end zone that we would call it. Yeah. But f- are you? How do you prepare? Do you prepare for that? I mean, is it a different game? Like when you're talking about studying tape and going there, we're talking CFL, which is a much larger field in a lot of ways. Yeah. So, uh, you know, ever since I heard about the CFL, it was, you know, when I had that uh, tryout in Osaka on February um, 2020, ever since then, you know, I was so interested about CFL. I wanted to play. That was my goal. That was my dream. So, Ever since then, like, I started watching the Grey Cup on YouTube. I watched a lot of the games on YouTube that I could find. And then I, I just kind of started picking up a lot of the rule changes. And then uh, I started, like, researching what's the rule change. Like, it's three downs instead of four. You know, the field's bigger. It's 12 players instead of 11. And then, like, uh, uh, you have to be one yard behind the line of scrimmage. All those little things. And I just uh, really studied it. And then uh, I noticed that. It's a lot more passing there than it is running just because the game is faster. Um, so, yeah, I, I really like I really like that part because, uh, you know, like like having three downs, it makes the game really, really fast paced. So I think the fans enjoy it more like in uh, NFL. They have way too many commercial breaks, you know. And then the time between plays are too long. So, you know, CFL cut it short. And then it, it's really, like, exciting. And it's really uh, – the offense really got that advantage. So, you know, like, you see a lot of great plays, a lot of great passes and stuff like that. So, uh, I really like the uh, CFL. I really like the way Canadians play football. It's a it's a it's it's an offensive-oriented league. Yeah. I will absolutely be open and honest about that every time because when you're sending men in motion – Prior to the ball being snapped, the defense is automatically at a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. So when I talk about defense in CFL, I, I won't say that it's one of those things that people d- disregard, but I know that there are you have to have a different athlete when you're playing a different game because the NFL game, yeah, size and speed does matter. Yeah, they're out there and they're quick, but they're playing on a smaller field. Mm-hmm. When you're talking about a bigger field than CFL, even though you throw an extra man in there, speed always – Beat space, man. Speed yeah. will always beat space. I yeah. feel like in I think that's where even though you talk about being undersized, even though you talk about all of that, it's those smarts and those studying, I feel like, mm-hmm. is where I I feel like, you know, you succeed is yeah. where you will succeed and where, you know, even on special teams, even if that's man, there's so many guys from Montana, even Dave Dickinson that coaches the Stan Peters, man. He was a Montana. I watched him play. I loved him play at the University of Montana. I watched him through the Stan Peters. I watched I, I watched a lot of guys go from Montana up to the CFL. And it's a door. It's exactly the a door way for individuals that uh, didn't get full rides. Yeah. You know, came from a different country. There's These stories are out there, man. And I'm excited to be able to follow yours through – this Winnipeg journey. Have you, did you ever, have you ever got a call from the NFL? Have you ever got a call from the XFL? That's Bobby D. He's one of our big time fans. He's, he's asking if you've ever got a call from those guys or if, you know, CFL is just where we're at right now. Yeah. So no, I never got a shot from the NFL. I never got a shot from uh, the CFL, but like I played with a linebacker. His name was Josiah Taoefa. And then he was, uh, he actually ended up going to the NFL for the Giants. So, and then when we both did the pro day together, you know, I felt like, you know, my numbers were better, but, you know, he had, he just had that hype. You know, he just had that, yep. like, he was the face of UTSA. And I just felt like, you know, I'm not saying I was better than him. I'm just saying if he could do it, I, I felt like I belong there too. So that actually motivated me, like, seeing him, you know, succeed in the NFL. I just wanted to be like, yeah, I want, I want to be right there with him. So, you know, I know that I can hang with him. I, I know that. If you can play special teams, I know I can play special teams too. So, and then I play my linebacker at junior college. His name is Kyle Wilson. He ended up going to the Eagles. Then he went to the Chargers. Now he's gonna play for uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats. So it's kind of yep. cool. We used to, I used to play Mike. He used to play Will. So seeing him go to the NFL too, I'm like, man, I used to play with that guy right next to him. You know, like so. It's like if he can do it, I can do it too. So now I get to actually play against him, which is very very cool. And then, uh, yeah, so, and then they got another player named Raheem Bigham. 
and then he played DM for uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats, and I played with him at junior college. So it's it's cool. It's exciting. And I got a couple of uh, players at UTSA that play in the CFL too. So I will get to see a lot of the players that I used to play with on the field, uh, on the other teams. But, yeah, maybe we can do some jersey swap or something, take pictures, and uh, it'll be something that we'll remember the rest of our life. Who was the uh, – I got a couple more questions, man. I don't want to take up whole much of your time today because I know you're – you're super busy. When you got that call, the draft happened um, like an hour later. Mm-hmm. You're still in the house. Like, did you take time alone? Did you go, like, sit down and go, holy, it's happening. Like, it's yeah. it's real. Like, this is real right now. Yeah. So, like, the thing was, like, yeah, I, I was actually, you know, I grew up in Kansas. So, a lot of my Kansas friends wanted me to go back to Kansas and have this, like, a party thing like a draft party with friends but like I was really about to go and then at the last second I was kind of like I kind of want to be like you know it's big kinda, news like, it's yeah, big news I kind of just want to be like by myself really because like that's really all like I grinded by myself I believed in myself by myself you know like so I kind of it was really me and God so it's just I wanted to be alone I just wanted to be like have my own space and just really taking that moment. So it was just me and my friend, uh, you know, he played football at UTSA. Uh, I was just at his house and we were both watching it. And then uh, I was just kind of like after, right after I saw it on the little tracker thing, I saw my name. As soon as that happened, I really just started praying. I just started to just like put my head down and close my eyes and really took, took in that moment. And then, um, and after that, I got the call and that's when I started screaming. So I was like, ah. Like, I just let it all go. So, yeah, it was really exciting. Um, yeah, so it's something I remember the rest of my life for sure. What was it? You just Did you just sign the contract yesterday? Did you just ink that yesterday? Or was it yes, the day sir. before? So, like, I signed it uh, about a couple of days ago, but then they officially made it, like, official yesterday. Right, like, right. They made it official yesterday. When uh, Was it hard signing that? Or was it, like, is this... Or was it like a no brainer? Like, um, this is my opportunity. I'm not gonna wait for anything else. Like, this is I'm jumping at this. I'm doing this. Yeah, like a lot of people, you know, might say that you know, like global players, we kind of get like minimum of minimum salary, so we don't get paid that much. Right. And then we don't really get paid until the first game, so it's like uh, some people might like complain about it, but with me, it was a no brainer. I was like, I'm not playing for money. I'm not playing for fame. I'm playing because I want to play with, like, you know, the best of the best. I want to play with uh, better, uh, you know, competition. So, you know, like, I want to just – I just signed the paper, and I was just really excited. I'm just waiting for, you know, this corona thing to be over with so I can just go to Winnipeg and start my training camp. Absolutely. Um, so everybody that's out there, can you just give your social so if anybody wants to follow you less, can they – can you shoot out your, uh, your socials to them so they can follow you and keep track of you on your journey? Yeah, so my Twitter and my Instagram is the same. It's really Les, L-E-S, and my last name, Maruo, M-A-R-U-O, and 44. So Les Maruo 44. And 44, obviously, is a number I wore at UTSA, and it means a lot. I kind of, you know, I got it randomly. Like, I just, they just gave me that number, but I always, like, like kind of like to put it. You know how the four kind of looks like an S? Absolutely. So I just put it like forever family or for uh, faith forever. So I just kind of wear that 44. And then even though I didn't pick that number, I, I, I feel like it was, you know, it was chosen for me. So, yeah. So you kind of feel like you, the number picked you, you didn't pick the number. Yeah. Just, just It just happened like it was just really, you know, cliche as it sounds, just God's plan. You know, everything is just everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you feel that plan? I mean, on it, it's hard for people that when when I ask this question, that's why I always love it when I get people that ha, that are uh, religious or faith or spiritual mm-hmm. like myself. Um, was is it hard for you to turn that over on a daily basis? Just to say, it's out of my hands. Um, there's nothing I can do about it, and I either move on from it or I make more of a success from it. Is that something that you you try to follow? I just kind of have that gut feeling, like, like 
if something's not meant for me, then I have like a gut feeling that it's like saying like, no, don't do that. And if it's like, like with football, like after my pro day of 2019, I could have easily gave up, but something in my body was telling me, give it a try again. Like, give it a go again. Like, go to a different country. Like, I wasn't really planning on going to Japan first. I was really more looking at, like, league in, like, the Germany and, like, Europe, Brazil, and, like, Australia, because those are more talked about league. Like, nobody really talks about Japan league. So I was just looking at those options, and I was kind of like, man, something's telling me that I need to go back and just give it a try. And then if – you know, that don't, if that doesn't work out, I can always say I tried. I went to, you know, a foreign country or I went to Japan or wherever. I went to another country and I went to another league and I tried. So I didn't want to just give up like that just because you didn't get a call. You know, don't give up. Like there's plenty of opportunities outside of America, outside of Canada. There's plenty of leagues out there. I know you're not going to get paid that much, but if you truly love the game, you're going to play. And I tweeted this today, but, you know, it's not over until you say it's over. It's almost like it's like it's not over until you give up, basically. So, you know, so uh, don't let other people tell you that, you know, your career is over because their opinion has nothing to do with your dreams and your goals. I could have easily let those opinions get to me and say, oh, man, you know, I didn't make it. But. Uh, I just kept believing. I just kept believing. I kept believing. I always thought that, you know, you know, I just, I belong there. So I just kept my faith and kept believing. And now it's really happening. So I just got to keep going, keep going, keep grinding, keep believing. And uh, just, you know, just, just go up from that. Awesome, man. Uh, on behalf of XFL Newsroom, XFL Extreme, and all the CFL fans, uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers linebacker, Les Moreau, thank you so much for taking the time today, man. It's been awesome. Um, we look forward to seeing you succeed. And um, I want you to stick with me. Everybody else, we're out of here. Um, but thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, the comments. Uh, and make sure you guys, when the season starts, check out number 44. If you're still going to be wearing 44, we don't know. <laughs> but we'll see if another we'll see if another number gets gifted to you, man. We appreciate yeah. the time. Appreciate that. Thank you for having me on here. Good job, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm just going to, what I'll do is I'll remove you out of here, and then when I end it, I'll bring you back in, okay? Okay.